Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you for coming for this session. I hope you are interested in one of the two innovation or entrepreneurship. My name is engineer Tuba Terekli. I'm known for both of these pillars in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. A little bit about myself. I am a, a Jeddawi, okay, of Turkish roots, and of course I'm a Saudi as well. Okay. Many people ask me, Did you speak Arabic or not? I say I'm Saudi, I don't know. So, of course I do. Um, my, my point in life was not what I'm doing now. I began my journey with uh, something extremely simple. I was raised by a, a very uh, strong team of women, my mom and my grandma and my uh, elder aunts, and a very supportive father. So um, the, those pillars basically were start everything you do with Iman, faith. You have to have faith in God, but most important, you have to have faith in the people around you and you have to have faith in the country where you are at and you have to have faith in yourself. So the first word they taught me was Iman. The second thing was Ibadah. And my parents were extremely clear that did not mean praying and fasting. That's something you have to do anyways. Ibadah meant that I had to spend my life to do good. And that's my name, Tuba, which is a tree in the heavens. That's why they named me that as well. To give and to produce whatever is required to serve your community from yourself. Okay? And the third thing, the third pillar was ilm. Ilm comes with irfan and it is knowledge, know-how, and I'm always thirsty to learn more. I've visited probably 170 universities worldwide um, any university you name it that's in the top 100 universities i've been there uh, nordic far east wherever you want me to go i have been because i have been questing my journey for knowledge and the last pillar which was embedded in me was ibda innovation i had to do things somewhat different I didn't do them to rebel. I was a very accepting and saying yes, you know, infused into my community, very proper person. But I had to do things in a way that made other people wonder, why aren't we doing things differently? So my father hated to take me to work. I used to force him because when I'm there, I used to ask the one million questions. People knew, oh, the chatterbox is here. She's gonna inquire, inquire, inquire till we can no longer talk. I used to ask and I used to listen and I used to say, but why? So they would think they gave me an answer, but I would say, but why? And that but why would continue for five hours at times with my parents till I drove them nuts. They couldn't wait to get me married. At 18, the first suitor that came to, through the door, they were like, take her, you know, just let her inquire with you for a while. And apparently he wasn't the right guy for me to inquire with. So after 10 years of marriage, I said, but why am I here? Had two kids, had done my bachelor's in computer science and engineering, and my life quest had just begun. At that point in Saudi, as a woman who's a single mom and you have a degree, you have many talents, but you, when you're stuck in a job that will only pay you maximum 7,000 after working there for 10 years, I asked myself again, but why? Why are CEOs that are women elsewhere in the world making $20 million a year? And there's no way a person, a woman here can become a CEO in a corporation. The glass ceiling isn't just thick, it's bulletproof. So I began that journey of saying, I'm going to be wherever they allow me to be without getting into the politics of the country, without removing my scarf, you know, I'm a happy muthajjaba, without challenging my ethics, without challenging my being, which is an inquisitive, innovative, knowledge-seeking mu'mina, and 
pursue what it is that I can achieve to help my country. Because what I'm doing, I was a teacher. It's great to be a teacher. But I did not want to stay in one place doing the same thing day in and out unless I saw results to my work. So my journey led me to being the first female in strategic planning in Saudi Aramco, female of any nationality, for being the first female in Middle Eastern healthcare and hospital operations. So where's strategic planning? Where's computer science? Where's healthcare operations, right? And then I spent eight years building hospitals from scratch with something called the Green Guide Council. And you may see I was the founding team member of IMC. You may all know International Medical Center is the only acceptable hospital we have today in Jeddah. And the International Extended Care Center that um, actually takes care of chronic patients of car accident survivors. And after that, in 2009, something hit me. I'm a chief of strategy in one of the best organizations, and I got, just got them King Khaled Foundation Award. But I'm the only girl in the team since eight years. No other women are around me, which is a question I asked when I was in Aramco as well, and I began the female training program in Aramco. And now today there are over 8,000 female uh, participants to Aramco's ecosystem as employees around the world. But at the sea level, in the company where I was at, there was no other female, especially Saudis. So I wondered what's happening. Are these women doing things by themselves? So are they becoming at least entrepreneurs? Began an initiative called Saudi Fast Growth 100, where we looked for high impact entrepreneurs. My quest was simple. If they exist, how many of them are men and how many of them are women? We did the list, we found there were people like Inas Hashani and a few others, but the numbers, two out of a list of 100 were girls. This is not equality, we're 50% of the population. In 2011, I became a member of too many, far too many committees in the government for entrepreneurship, and we did a study with Boston Consulting Group looking into what's holding you the seekers of a future back from seeking entrepreneurship as a lifestyle. We found 36 initiatives, 36 things that we as a country were not doing at all. And about 140 things we could do more effectively. So we said, okay, we're going to start doing these things. I worked with five ministers at the time. Minister of Labor, you may know him, Engineer Adel at that time. Minister of Commerce, Dr. Tofi Garabia, who to till today I work with very well. And three other guys from Minister of Social Affairs, Ministry of Economy and Planning, and Ministry of Finance. What we found out was very simple. Investors thought there are no entrepreneurs, and entrepreneurs thought there are no investors, no believers. Parents thought entrepreneurship is not a course for their children. You have five choices in life in Saudi. A, get married, B, get married, C, get married, D, get married, and fifth, if you're not doing it well, get divorced. This is true for guys and girls. But those choices have changed in the last 11 years thanks to work of those women that took the stand up way back when it mattered. So now you have a choice of A, find yourself, B, see what you can do to make those around you proud of you, three, become a mom and take care of kids, that's always an option. Don't become a mom and, and just do what you wanna do but make impact that's loud enough for the whole world to hear that you're here. And five, stay home, do nothing, whine and weep on social media, right? Actually, the fifth has become the pillar of choice for almost 60% of our society girls. 
those girls that have PhDs. Saudi Arabia is uh, number one in a lot of things that are bad. Saudi Arabia is number one in global car accidents. Saudi Arabia is also the number one in all around female PhDers sitting at home. You're lucky you have a lot of good professors around you that are willing to give back, but most of them choose to stay home and do nothing. So today my role here is to try and excite you a little bit about innovation and what's possible. Because if you come into my office, one of the things that you'll see, there are many things you'll see that are different than norm, is the word impossible says, I am possible, right? You probably have heard this a hundred times. My fundamental problem was, whenever we mention the word innovation, people assume you have to be a rocket scientist. It's just a humble opinion of people. They think it takes too much time, too much R&D, too much money, too much something to become an innovator. And it even will take you more time to make that innovation into something people are willing to buy. What you wanted about cars, you'll probably say faster car, a safer car. In those days, there were no cars. So they would have said, we wanted faster horses. Can you make our forces faster? Henry Ford thought of something completely different than what they had. How many of you are capable of taking yourself into the dream la la land of I want things better, faster, cheaper, more quality, and expressed in a completely new way? Innovation is tough. This is how the brain of a person who innovates looks every second. That's how much thought processing needs to go into for you to be able to innovate. Money is the single most important factor in life. Why? After time. Without it, you can't do good. Without it, you can't eat. Without it, you can't dress. Without it, you can't go to school. Without it, you can't move. You don't have money in your pocket. Today, you're gonna get depressed and be among those 90% of women that are daily depressed because they don't have enough money. So you need to understand money. An innovator understands money very well and time extremely well. These two factors make up 90% of your daily choices, time and money. The other 10% is left for ethical purposes. Is this gonna save me time? How much money is this gonna cost me? How much am I gonna need for this? They take up or they should take up 90% of your decision-making process. So plan, do, check, and what? Act, PDCA. This is how innovation is done in hospitals. This is how innovation is done in life. That's why I asked how many of you are system designers and analyzers. Planning things takes a lot of time. Some people have numbers for these things. They say spend 60% of your time on planning, 40% on execution. Some say 80% time on planning, 20% on ox execution. It's an oxymoron. I, I don't think you should spend a amount of time on planning if you don't know what is the outcome of those plans going to lead to. You have to be very clear with your goals. So I would spend more time putting down the goals and really studying those goals and asking people if these are the right goals. So it may not be such a bad idea to spend a lot of time on goals, but you don't see that there, right? In goal, you, the primary uh, you know, goal is in healthcare, basically reduce the amount of time it takes to treat a patient, improve quality of treatment, reduce cost, reduce resources. Pretty soon you'll have one doctor doing 50 surgeries in 400 countries if we had that many, okay? That's, that's their idea of a goal. You have to have your goals in life in order to become an innovator. Continuous improvement is about making things better and that's what innovation is, making things better. Nobody expects you to invent a method where, who's watched the Jetsons? Now you know my age. 
Hmm? Guy. He doesn't even wake up. Some... Some thing, some arm of a robot takes him out of bed, pushes him into the shower. It, he gets washed automatically, dresses automatically, eats automatically. All he has to do is open his mouth and somebody's putting food inside. Gay, give him the briefcase. He's in a car that drives itself. He arrives at the office and he's like, what? Oh my God, I have a meeting because the robot secretary is pulling him out. Okay. So. This guy, this is a, a very young researcher in Russia, said, where is healthcare going in the future? Is it going to get to a place where people are going to bring their hospitals to their homes? They will no longer go to hospitals. So people are continuously on the quest to becoming a Jetson. They want things done for themselves. And if we were to have the Jetsons today, we would have resolved the what? The biggest problem is Saudi Arabia. Ta'shirat adadat. Page number one, Arab news. Indonesia still not allowing Saudis to get maids. Page number two of Arab news. Okay, Philippines has approved another 150,000 ta'shira for dadat. Right? We've reached a position and place in our life where we're placing people with the things we want done for ourselves and that's not a good place. No other youth on earth, except for people in Brunei and some people down in Qatar and Kuwait, enjoy such a luxury. But guess what? In Qatar, there are only 420,000. They can afford it. Our country can't. We are 20 seven million Saudis, of which half of us are under the age of 30. So no, we need people to work, okay? And stop thinking too much about becoming what you see in the films, even though they look extremely cool. The iPad, an instrument that was just invented back in 2000, come, who can remember? When did they receive their first iPad? Huh? Nobody? <gasps> 2010? I was in GCF back in 2009 and we were Global Competitiveness Forum. Saudi Arabia does have a very famous forum. It's called Global Competitiveness Forum. It's called Road to Davos. Every year world leaders get together by invitation only in Riyadh and it happens in January or Feb. And I still remember 2009, we got the first iPad in our hands as a gift because we had to try it out. And it wasn't available for sale in Saudi till like two years after that. But what was fun is the potential when you're given a tool of what you can actually build with that thing. Have you ever thought when you hold your iPhone or iPad in your hand, what you can build with it? No? Oh, we got a long way to go, man. All right, but this guy did. He provided, who knows whose drawing this is? Please, please, somebody answer, please, oh God. Oh, thank God, all right, okay, we're not that bad. Okay, we know Da Vinci. That guy was considered a nutcase and crazy person in the time when he was the top of the world for all the rest of us today. People literally thought he's nuts. He was drawing people that fly and, you know, how to breathe down on the sea. And so it's okay to be a little crazy. You'll find that out. Now, people that build these things, the wearables, they're going crazy. They want you to wear an abaya that's going to make you look cool for the morning classroom in the morning because the material is made from a, uh, a certain factor. It's called translucent and you can actually fix its color with your iPad. Okay, the mode is a little bit of a right? And gray tarha, I nafsi. myself. In the at night, you want it to shimmy, 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 shimmering. So you change the material. People are actually working on getting you that. Guess what? Guess what you're going to do when that arrives? You're going to buy it. You're going to be a consumer of technology. That's all we are. Saudi Arabia is one of the world's largest consumers of technology. We are effectively the largest consumer of YouTube. We produce more YouTube videos than YouTube can count. Are 
I go ahead and design a YouTube. Not a single person has thought about it. What? What is? Hello? Tab. But my jetty. Wow. Who cares? Well, YouTube has changed lives of people in immigration camps because they're able to post live what are the problems, issues they're having. YouTube has raised so much money for people using their videos that inquire about who can help them from around the world in crowdfunding campaigns. Um, please tell me you heard of crowdfunding. Core crowdfunding. Okay, okay, let, don't let the teacher speak for you. Crowdfunding. I need a name of a crowdfunding platform from the audience. Crowdfunding. All right, girls, lots of work to do here. Crowdfunding, like Kickstarter and... Who's heard of Kickstarter, the name? Okay, so you know the brand, Two Girls, Two Girls, is a platform where these guys who want us to make these wearable devices actually post their projects and say, I'm gonna automize how you make Tamiz. Here is my Tamiz maker. Would you like to contribute a dollar or a dime or a hundred dollars or $500 and you'll get in your home by PO Box the first automatic Tamiz maker, right? It actually existed, I'm not kidding. But here is the deal. People do contribute and these people raise millions of dollars. I'm now mentoring a team with Marwan in Finland. 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 Okay? Arabi. Probably the number of Muslims are what? A hundred? I don't know. But they are doing an app for Quran that builds a community around Quran. The team member and leader is a Pakistani kid. He says the way we read Quran today with no connection is wrong. Quran should be a part of our lives. We should get a task every morning saying, look at these 10 ayahs, memorize them, and give us your feedback on how fast you were able to read these ayahs. And did you do this while you're jogging or while you're walking or, okay? If people in Finland are thinking about our daily lives they're gonna sell it to us and they're gonna make a ton of money so you better figure out stuff to sell make a ton of money the human being there will always be a need for the human being because human beings are the fastest and bestest problem solvers the most accurate solutions to problems come from human beings because machines are just that junk in junk out in programming what do we say Junk in, junk out. The Jaijo, oh my God, okay. So if you put in the wrong code, you get the wrong outcome. Definitely, definitely, what needs to be done on innovation is a mindset change. If you are capable of getting eight hours of sleep a day, you're one of the lucky, how many thousand in the world? Do you know your numbers? Very, very, very few people get sound sleep in the world. Very few. Because of body pains or psychological effect or their routine or their lifestyle or they're having no location to sleep in the first place. All right, some good stuff and some scary stuff. And then I'll take questions. I don't know how much time I have for questions left. Okay, five minutes. The good stuff is you're still young. All of this could be history and no problems will be there if you all do what you're supposed to do, which is to make a better life for all of us. 